yesterday, the concern was mud. Not getting ourselves into a spot where we couldn't go forward, couldn't turn around, couldn't back up. Jason's instinct was good to just find a campsite a little on the early side, hunker down. The weather report said it should be less chance of rain today. And sure enough, this morning um, it is almost clear. There's some blue sky. Now it's still slippery this morning. Uh, I've been slipping around a little bit, but nothing like yesterday. The new worry today is that we've realized the route that Jason plotted is maybe a, a number more miles than, than he realized. All this very slow driving uphill yesterday burned a lot of gas. And we've only done a tiny fraction of what we need to do to get to where there's anywhere any chance of finding more gas. Now I've got 10 extra gallons on the back of the truck. I think Jason's got five extra gallons with him. But if we don't get down into some more flat trails where we can, you know, do more than three, four or five miles an hour, um, we're going to be in trouble. This is beautiful out here. We really thought this was just going to be sort of a not very interesting drive, but all of the terrain has been way more dramatic and scenic and epic than we ever imagined. So it's been a beautiful morning and we've just come over this gorgeous rise out through this treeless sort of grassland and up over the hill just this foreboding bank of clouds. Hopefully that's more just sort of like morning fog kind of stuff down in the valley as opposed to something that's carrying more rain.
increasingly clear that we may have a problem. So here's the situation at the moment. We realized that the route we were on was going to run us into a pretty big chunk of private land. Now, it looks like there may be some routes that go through it, but we're hoping to find sort of a way around it. The other issue is that because um, fuel is becoming sort of questionable, if we push too far down in some place and realize that we uh, aren't going to be able to get through and would have to backtrack. Uh, we're not necessarily um, equipped with enough fuel to do that. So we've stopped at a nice little spot here having some lunch and then we're going to sit down and look at the map some more, try and come up with a new plan that makes sense. After kicking everything around for a while, we've decided to detour over into a nearby town to fuel up. I already had an alternate possible route for this year's trip that we can easily pick up from there. I had planned to explore that segment on my own later this week after parting ways with Jason, but instead we're going to just reroute that way after gassing up. I know this doesn't really look like much, but this stretch of trail road uh, that we're driving on, um, sort of skirting some BLM lands and some uh, private land, but then it's gonna cut into more BLM land. I noticed on the map that it was called Old Oregon Trail. This very sort of nondescript gravel road through uh, some farmlands over there and some sort of grassy hills over here. Doesn't look like much, but this route is actually was part of the old Oregon Trail. And so I thought that was just an interesting bit of history to run part of this route along such um, a storied, historic, you know, one of the ultimate overland routes ever. <laughs> I mean, it's weird to think that, you know, people in horse-drawn wagons coming from the eastern half of the United States looking for a better life would have traveled this route. It's already late afternoon and at this point we're just looking for a spot to make camp so tomorrow can be a new chapter as we set out on this new route. At least that's the plan.
here's the situation we find ourselves in. Um, middle of the night, it started raining. It rained for a number of hours on and off. When we came out here yesterday afternoon, it wasn't raining and the roads were pretty slick. It's that same sort of Eastern Oregon mud that gets really, really slick and greasy when wet. The problem is that this stretch of the route that we were about to explore is just going to be more and more of this driving on these dirt roads. Now this is less treacherous than when we were up in those mountains. Currently for the moment it's just been flat. There's no there's no cliffs to fall off of but this mud um, remains very slippery. Um, when there's rain coming down there's the potential of actually getting stuck. The other thing that happens is your tires churning up this mud just tears the road up and then it dries with these ruts and so it's really preferable not to be on these roads when it's wet. We also just simply don't know exactly what the terrain ahead may hold if we end up in some hilly areas on some off camber um, sections of this dirt road it could get treacherous again. The weather forecast unfortunately shows that it's just going to keep raining for the rest of the time we have out here. So um, ultimately we've decided that the wisest course is to stop. Stop this scouting trip. It's not prudent. Um, it's not good for the roads. There's a number of reasons why we shouldn't be out here doing this at this time. Uh, it's unfortunate that odds are normally it would be dry and sunny out here. We're going to have some breakfast, kick around some possibilities. Yes. Jason offered to cook a little breakfast for the two of us, uh, so I wasn't going to say no to that. Hey, go, Donald. Mmm, that's quite good. With breakfast complete, we've packed up camp and have decided to extract to the highway by the shortest route possible. Just trying to get back out of here, the freshly wet mud confirms that these are just not the right conditions to be scouting in unknown territory. After some hours on the highway, we're looking for some place to camp. It's wet here too, but these roads just don't get slippery in the same way. Stay tuned for the final episode in this series where we'll kick back and enjoy the epic campsite that's up at the end of this trail.